Now the 12C as Seth and I feel is the up and coming tuning platform. Costs are right, but the fuel system's wrong. Uh, upgrading fuel injectors, upgrading the rails, upgrading the lines, but more importantly, what's in the fuel tank? What kind of pumps? What can we flow? How do they stay full? Uh, we, we plan to go on this little journey of figuring out what we don't know, making some mistakes, and ultimately, kicking out a fuel system. This is the last piece. It's our ground nut for the strap that goes to the fuel cell tank. Uh, we have a filler neck out. Uh, now all we have is just the two support straps, and then we can pick the vehicle up off the tank. I guess normally people lower the tank, but since we have a lift, we're just going to set the car down, put something underneath the tank, and pick the car up off of it. And after this, uh, we can see what kind of fuel pumps we have. So as we've been going on, we've been getting sweatier and gassier, and at this point we just need to pull off the feed line. Get yeah, everything done, but I forgot to detach the feed line to the fuel rail. So we're doing that, and then the tank's on its way out. Uh, to last all winter. Well, wow, there's definitely something still connected to it. Nah. Huh. Well, we seems, did it! Seems pretty darn light for having what? There's probably 10 gallons of fuel in there. I mean, it's not laying on you, but when you heard I heard, this is where I wish I didn't weigh so much. I shouldn't say that. I wish my gut wasn't so freaking huge. All right. Use my body to keep you alive. Now I'll put my foot under it. There. You want to put it on that? Yep. <laughs> it's time to figure out what kind of pumps are inside. Brushless or brushed? Harness for the tanks. Just have a little bit of pull on, but you can see everything's almost there. Yeah, give that a whiff. Real big one. Give me a it, strong it's, pull. Yeah, it stinks. In the best way possible, obviously. It's like I'm living my dreams of like, oh my god, I love how gasoline smells to the point where it's like, oh my god, I don't want to smell gasoline ever again. Now I'm ready to pull out the fuel pump. I did crack the seal a little bit because I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. But uh, now I can look like I'm extremely strong. <laughs> I still struggle with it. Definitely getting there. So right now I am going to pull out the driver's side fuel pump sending unit. <laughs> I just disconnected the Y connector that connects the two pumps and uh, a second line. I'm not, I'm not really clear what it's for. So pump's coming out right now. And we have added some safety.
I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, just got the fuel sending unit out and it is dripping fuel everywhere. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's like its own little surge tank. It's, it sits in just a big cavity of fluid. Well, fuel. For his first magic trick, per McLaren, you have to siphon the hose by mouth. <laughs> so, I can't get the other fuel pump out because I'm not positive how to remove the fuel line, but I did get this one out and they're both the same. So now I'm going to remove the fuel pump from the surge tank casing. If working in IT has taught me anything, it's ground your piece of work before you touch it to reduce static. And that's what we did with the jumper cable. It's definitely overkill, but we definitely have a strong ground with a bolt for our two post lift. Uh, right now we're about to pull off the second pump, the passenger side, and uh, it's coming off right now. Well, Seth and I bled a little, sweat a lot, Broke a few tools, broke a few, few sensors, but in the end we got the fuel tank out and we are determined to flow close to a thousand horse worth of ethanol.